I have a second channel, Cube Comp MTDX. Hey everybody, this time I'm going to continue the series on the uh, dryers. Today I'm going to be pulling the usual parts out of this roper. For those who haven't watched the previous videos, I had gotten this Whirlpool dryer that's over there for free. Um, untested, got it home, pulled the back off, cleaned it out real good. And so far, for the most part, it's doing okay. I mean, it could use it could use some work. Um, there's some parts, some wear parts that could be replaced on it, but it is drying clothes now, so that's definitely a good thing. This one here was too, but the condition it's in is just flat out awful. Um, this dryer along with that Kimball 90 series washer um, they were both pulled out of my grandmother's old mobile home which for many years uh, wasn't lived in the place had fallen into disrepair As a matter of fact it was unlivable and um, it had roof leaks walls were starting to cave in yet it was bad so there was lots of moisture in the home and um, and of course, yeah, she wouldn't. She hadn't been living in it for many years, and this and the washer were both um, subjected to that moisture, along with mice and stuff like that. So, while the washer was easily fixable, the only thing it needed was to be unseized and the ag agitator dogs being replaced. It works fine, perfectly fine. The rubber, however, it was just. It, it it would dry the clothes after I got it working, but uh, it's just due to condition. Yeah, it was it was, it was time for it to go. So in this video, we'll be pulling it apart. I'll get to show you the inside of it, and you'll see exactly why I'm retiring this thing. Okay, so I'm gonna start out by taking the cover off the back, the bottom cover anyway. So I've already pulled the cord out of this one because at first I was going to use it on the other dryer, but after a closer inspection of the plug, I said, nah, I'm going to replace it. So, you know, the Whirlpool dryer has a brand new cord on it. Yeah, I'm saving all screws and stuff because this thing's going to have to go back together. Um, <clears throat> they make matters a lot easier when it gets hauled off. Better to haul off one piece better than a dozen pieces if you know what I mean. <laughs> the inside looks rather nice and clean compared to the other one. It's because, well, in 2016 this one got cleaned out really good. <laughs> um, <clears throat> yeah. You see, I don't do a whole lot of um, laundry because it's just me living here. And uh, I don't go through clothes all that much. I only do about maybe maybe two or three loads a month. <laughs> so I'm not doing a whole lot. So, yeah, this thing hasn't had too much use on it. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and out when I can. Now some of this stuff, I'm not sure exactly how it comes out because I didn't 
install it. I never had to service this stuff. Like the heater box and these. Yeah, I never had any issues with these, but I think how this works is this. The heater box kind of pops in half. And it's time you have the heating element and stuff like that. So I'm going to pull off these two wires. <clears throat> Let me see. That is... I think the main wire is the heating element. Well, these could be two. Actually, I think it's just these two. Yeah, this is this is a thermostat. So this dryer, I mentioned in the previous video, I was kind of uncertain on some things. This thing has, I believe this is the high limit thermostat and high limit thermal fuse. We also have a high limit fuse over here and a cycling thermostat. Think anyway. Actually, no. These two down here are actually hook up to the. Yeah, I got it backwards, guys. These down here on the very bottom are the connections for a heater. Yeah, this here is the high limit thermostat. Being kind of bare to get off of there, which is not a bad thing, given the amount of current that flows through these wires. Jeez. There. So once we get this open, I should be able to point out what is what. This is hard to there for certain. Yeah, with heater elements, they typically either work or don't work. So it's not, not a bad idea to say that this one was working. So this is the heating element right here. You have these wires that actually feed the element. I'm going to go ahead and pull this since it was good. Yeah, all the, all the screws on the uh, heater box are kind of rusted. Of course, that's the part that gets the hottest in this whole, whole thing. <laughs> You're something funny. Good. I'm not sure if you say it or not. Yeah. Yeah, the story about this dryer was um <clears throat> when I guess sometime a while back my grandmother probably had to have a service. Because when I first got in this thing, up in this cat up in this um, control box here was a little bag that had an old thermal fuse and an old high limit thermostat in it. Apparently, what had happened, yeah, so the cycling thermostat that was in this dryer was, was, was stuck closed, circuit closed. So, it would not cycle and cycle off the heating element once the dryer reaches the, the proper internal temperature. So what would happen is the dryer would keep heating until the high limit thermostat um, kicked. And eventually the high limit thermostat failed. 
So the technician replaced the high limb thermostat and the thermal fuse. The cyclone thermostat was not replaced. <laughs> so, yeah. So what would happen when I first got this thing, the, as I mentioned, cyclone thermostat was stuck closed. The dryer would just keep running. If I set the if I set the timer to automatic dryer, automatic dry, it will just keep running and never advance the timer at all. Yeah. And the thing is, the cycling thermostat is intended to cycle on and off, on and off as the dryer gets up to temp. This guy, however, is only intended to operate when a cycling thermostat doesn't operate. In other words, this is not designed to regularly switch on and off, on and off. It's not designed for it. It'll, it'll cause it to fail. And when this does fail, the dryer will heat up a little bit higher until it gets the thermal fuse. Yeah, I'm going to have to research this a little bit more. This might be a thermal another thermal fuse or another thermostat. Because in my opinion, you need to have a thermal protection fuse over here. Let's say if, you know, for example, with that Whirlpool dryer, <laughs> um, you know, the, the door switch goes bad, the door is open, the thing's running, there's no air going across these, um, these heating elements, and that will cause a cycling thermostat to, or a high limit thermostat to, to trip out very often, and eventually it could fail. Let's say if it fails, these heating elements stay on without any sort of thermal fuse, one shot device being in there, you'd have a fire. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, I guess look how black. Interesting. Look how black this section here is, but down here it's not black. I think it's just from just from use. I mean the heating elements they still work just fine. So hey guys, I'm, I apologize that this ain't a quick going video. I didn't plan for it to be. So I figured I'd just shoot some video while I tear this thing apart and have my typical com commentary as usual. So I'm going to go ahead and pop this off. So first, I have to uh, detach two Phillips screws up here that hold. Actually, they're already out. That's right. They're already out because I recently. Um, I had recently pulled the door switch out of this one because the door switch in the whirlpool was was uh, stuck closed. So that means we just got to take this out. So here's the inside of this one, which looks kind of, kind of dirty. Um, apparently, when we last cleaned it, we didn't get every single thing out of it. But I think my grandmother. I don't think she. Uh, I don't think she 
clean the lint filter on every side clock like you're supposed to. Because this thing was just absolutely packed full of lint. It's a wonder, it, it, it's kind of a wonder it didn't catch fire. So while I'm at it, I'm going to go ahead and actually pull off this cycling thermostat. Because the Whirlpool dryer, while it does work and it's, th it's cycling thermostat is cycling, it seems to be cycling too soon. Because I can set it even way past the energy preferred setting and uh, my clothes are still kind of wet when it finishes. I have to restart it and give it a second go for it to actually, you know, get the clothes dry. I'm going to pull these wires off too. So these wires here, these were not affected by mice, but there was a wire inside here that was. We'll get to it here soon. So I'm going to pull this little guy out of here. Yeah, it's funny, this, some, this cycling thermostat was a replacement that my parents installed in their older Frigidaire dryer a few years back, but they had replaced that dryer. So this thing didn't have all that much uh, use on it. So yeah, cycling thermostat, high limit thermostat, thermal fuse, and... I'm going to guess this here could be another type of thermal, thermal fuse. Okay, I apologize if this wasn't very eventful. So, let's go ahead and get, get on to something that's going to be a bit more eventful. Um, i got to readjust the camera here to show you up in this area. Behind the control, behind the uh, controls and all that. And I'll try to get you a good look at that too. It's hard to get every single thing in, in view. So I'm going to pull this off just so that way you guys can see inside here. Yeah, really, to be honest, I'm not going to bother taking stuff out of here because these parts differ from the ones on the uh, Whirlpool dryer. Today, guys, this uh, cordless screwdriver just keeps on going and going and going. I've only uh, I've only recharged a battery at once since I got it. Yeah, get that <laughs> one time. So yeah, the uh, com the uh, controls inside the uh, <laughs> inside the rubber dryer are very very sparse. You have a timer and a start button. <laughs> That's it. Um, you can see this. You maybe you'll see this right here. There's all sorts of holes where other parts would go in in place. Let's say, for example, in a Whirlpool dryer or a Kenmore that has more functionality to it, rather than this. Um, Barium thing. <laughs> so, you may see these wires here are wrapped in electrical tape. That's because a mouse chewed the insulation off of both of these. And this is why 
I always stress inspecting a dryer or any appliance that has been, let's say, stored in a shed or you don't know the history of, stuff like that. I always recommend going to, going over something really good just to make sure it's safe. And you can see my uh, electrical tape repair has held up very well over those roughly three years. You know all the rust there. Yeah, that that's how bad this thing is rusted out. It's it's, <laughs> it's pretty rusty. It's another one of the reasons why I decided to pull the trigger and get rid of it. I mean, it is just rusted like crazy. The other one has a couple of rust spots. The Kenmore washer has a couple of rust spots, but nothing like this. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and put this cover back on. And we'll spin the dryer around and we'll try to get access to the motor so I can harvest it. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and get into here. Yeah, sorry guys, I'm not sure exactly what to do with the flashlight now. So. Okay, so in here we have the drum. The belt. Yeah, you can sort of see it. Yeah, that was the kind of that was kind of a challenge for me. It was like, how do you get into this thing? Okay, so there's two screws. One here and one here. And they're both five sixteenths. And I think once those two are out, the whole face of this dryer comes out. Yep, it does. That also means the drama stuff will fall down too, so. <laughs> slides off like that. See I was trying to figure out figure that out because that way if I want to I can do the same with the whirlpool dryer to get at some stuff down here that way I can clean inside better than I did previously. So the drum should now be able to slide right out. the belt off.
that's the drum. <clears throat> yeah, I love how the uh, the drums on Whirlpool dryers are like a giant cylinder. Big hole on one side, big hole on the other side. <clears throat> so, <laughs> there's not much to the inside of clothes dryer. I mean, you have your stuff in the back, the heating element and stuff, but really there's not that much to a clothes dryer. You know, the inside of this thing does not look all that bad, but it's a very cheap end roper, so and with all the stuff you, I can find, if you if like if you look up on Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace or next door um, buy and sell, there's washers and dryers everywhere for sale for dirt cheap. So it's it does not really hurt my feelings to to, to uh, trash this one because it's not in the I mean it's not really in the best of shape, but it does have some usable parts in it that could be reused for the Whirlpool dryer like for example this motor and to get that out we have to take the blower wheel off so yeah <laughs> so I'm curious how old this dryer is I see Manufacturing date 108A9. So, yeah, that's a date code. Not 100% certain how to interpret that. Now, as I mentioned, this, uh, <clears throat> this, um, dryer was subject to, as I mentioned, you know, the high moisture, but this motor is fine. I see no. I, I don't see any reason not to not to keep it as a uh, spare for the other one because I think I think that Whirlpool driver there has the exact same motor in it, and this one would work. And it spins spins good and easy. That's one thing you want to check for on these. Um, you know, this centrifugal switch does work. And, uh, yeah, as I mentioned, you know, this spins nice and free. With dryers, that can be, in, you have to check this because sometimes you get a lot of lint in there. It can get in the bearings and cause the thing to, to get stiff and lock up. Um, motor in my parents' fridge air dryer years ago failed due to this because of so much lint getting inside there. And that was when my parents, you know, all of us learned a valuable lesson of keeping your your dryer maintained. That's kind of a kind of a long story. I don't really go into it here, but anyways, this belt. Heck, even the belt seems okay. Yeah, the belt. I don't see any cracks in the uh, in the grooves. Heck, I may as well save it. Yeah, the belt seem, even seems okay. Although belts are. Pretty cheap to come by. I mean, you can, matter of fact, on Amazon, you can buy the belt in this roller kit for like next to nothing. Yeah, these rollers, I'm not gonna waste my time with them. <laughs> okay, so I went ahead and looked up online, <clears throat> watched a video on how to replace the motor in one of these, and to get the bore wheel off, we first have to actually remove the uh, couplings that hold the motor in place. And we'll worry about the wiring harness in a moment. So to get the bowl wheel off on this guy, it normally takes two adjustable wrenches, but I don't have two adjustable wrenches. But I do have 
a pair of channel locks and one adjustable wrench. So, see if we can make do with that. Okay, so after trying and trying and trying to thread this bowl wheel off the motor, it just is not coming off. Now, apparently, from what I have researched before, this is a common problem with these dryers. Over time, with use, it's like the blower just fuses itself to the motor. And it's plastic, but it's like it just fuses itself on there. No matter how hard I tried to get this thing off, now I made sure I looked allow, made sure I was threading in the right direction, it wouldn't budge. It was stripping out the uh, the the hex nut on the back. So I think our only only way we're gonna be able to save this motor is is, is if we uh, sabotage and destroy the the blower <laughs> blower wheel. Hopefully the one that's in this other dryer should ever have to replace the motor. Hopefully the other blower will be a bit more forgiving and actually come off. I think what it is, this dryer here is because it's the environment it's been in for so, it's been in for so many years. You know, with all the rust that's in here, obviously is a sign. It's probably why this thing is being like this, so we're gonna tear this bowl out of pieces if we have to. I'm gonna start drilling some holes in it. <laughs> Just see if we can weaken it up a bit. Because if I can just get, if I can tear it up to where it's just a piece left in the center, I can take that out and take it up to my parents' garage and get on a vice and get the rest of it off. So, see what we can do here. Yeah, my camera run out of memory. So you might miss this the last part of me um, going crazy on this uh, nub or what's left of the blower wheel. I'm having to make it narrow enough to fit the little bitty freaking holes on the back of this uh, blower cage. So let's see if it'll come out now. Let me try it again. Okay guys, that did it. Finally. Finally. Here's our motor. <laughs> and you can see I did a freaking number on the uh, blower. But the motor's fine. Didn't, didn't hurt it a bit. So what I have to do is I'll have to get this thing on a vise. On a good vise clamp it down this plastic and just tighten as hard as I can and then take a wrench to this other side over here and so I can get that off of there. Because supposedly it just it, it threads on to the motor. You can kind of see the end of the motor shaft which I nicked just a little bit but it's it's alright. Yeah these motors usually cost you about seventy dollars if you buy them new. And usually motors don't typically fail that much. Um, ones in the dryers are real simple. I mean, they have a start winding in them, so they don't have a capacitor to go. Uh, you just have a centrifugal switch in the back that um, serves several purposes. It uh, not only in in energizes the start winding when the switch 
is, I believe, in the closed position. When the motor is resting, it, en it engages the start winding. But also, once the motor does speed up and the start winding disengages, or the, the, the centrifugal switch disengages, it also allows the heat to come on. So, it's a safety feature built in. So, if this thing isn't, move this, uh, this thing isn't running, that heat should not run. But, as I mentioned earlier in this video, you know, if the door is open and the thing is running for any reason, like your door switch is messed up, like the one on the other Whirlpool was, uh, what could happen is uh, the heater would then have no airflow across it, which could be very bad. So, anyways, <laughs> I think that sums it up for what I want to harvest out of this piece of crap. So, yeah. We have, let me round up all the stuff. So we have the heating element, a motor, a cycling thermostat, high limit thermostat. Those four components there. That's all I really care to say about this thing. Um, there is a thermal fuse down there, but I mean, <laughs> given how cheap this stuff is on Amazon, I just don't really see the point of of saving. I mean, you can buy a cycling thermostat and thermal fuse for like I think less than twenty dollars. So. Yeah. <laughs> if for any reason that goes, I'll probably just buy a new one. So, anyways, now I just gotta put this thing back together. I'm gonna probably leave the drum out because there are there are ways you could actually reuse that drum. Um, you could actually, uh, I think some people have actually used them for for making like burn barrels with. So there's no telling what what we could do with it. I mean, either myself or my dad might have something for it. Might be able to reuse it for something random. Who knows? Reminds me of the video of, uh, on S&M Destruction where they destroyed a Whirlpool dryer. It has about the same kind of drum except the opening on it was bigger like the one that's on this new world, this new Whirlpool I have over here. <laughs> Man got inside of it and, and rolled down the hill. Anyways, I think that wraps it up. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Well guys, that's it for this one. But it doesn't have to be. There's plenty more videos on the channel to check out. Also, if you liked the video, please click the like button. And if you absolutely hated it, there is the alternative button as well. But yeah, please subscribe to the channel. I definitely appreciate it. And remember to click the bell so that we get notified of all updates. Also, if you're interested in things aside from computers and technology, check out my second channel. It's CubeCompMTDX. Over there you'll find videos about weather, elevators, bicycling, and pretty much whatever else I figure out to upload. So yeah, anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this video. And thank you for your support.